Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox, and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me, tmasso at thewatchbox.com. It's in the description below. It is your purchase and pricing email question line for buying this or any watch you see on any Watchbox platform. Please reach out to me directly. Email tmasso at thewatchbox.com for pricing. Today, we're discussing a spectacular timepiece. Launched in the United States of America back in 2015, this is the RGM 801 Corps of Engineers. The watch is inspired by Hamilton Railroad watches taken over to Europe during World War I by the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. And this watch is built in both the spirit and the image of those railroad chronometers. So in stainless steel, the watch is 42 millimeters in diameter, it is 11.8 millimeters thick and from lug tip to lug tip, 52.4 millimeters with a 22 millimeter spacing between the lugs. On my wrist, which is 16 centimeters circumference, you can see it as a large timepiece. Because it is over 52 millimeters lug to lug, I'm going to recommend this watch for a wrist of my size that's 16 centimeters or larger. That said, it's not excessively thick. Being less than 12 millimeters thick, it will slide underneath a dress cuff, so it's slender, and with a domed bezel, it really allows the sleeve to ramp up and over it. We have a lovely distressed calfskin strap in medium brown with quite a bit of stuffing or bolstering. There's a lightly contrasting stitch that matches the color of the fotina on the dial. Taking a quick look, it has a sheer cut side showing thick layers of leather, and on the bottom, black calfskin. RGM. The initials of the founder, Roland G. Murphy, a Wostep trained watchmaker working out of Lancaster, Pennsylvania today. He is both a creator of watch designs and a creator of watch movements, as RGM is by far the foremost among American watch brands in creating and actually bringing domestically crafted movements to market. The buckle is simple. You can see RGM, the logo, Sat Nation. Not a whole lot to talk about there, but the Sat Nation matches the case. The case is simple and strong. The lugs taper somewhat. They have a little bit of a narrow profile when viewed end on, though they are sheer when viewed from the side. We have a sheer case flank, which melds with the bezel that has a domed profile. Everything is brushed and longitudinally satinated. We have a simple vintage-inspired unsigned crown. And then we have a dial that is the focal point of this watch. Even with the Caliber 801, it is the Corps of Engineers dial with Grand Faux enamel that makes this special. First thing you need to know is it is very much in the spirit of the original watches. They looked exactly like this. The next thing you need to know is that Fotina does not in any way impede legibility at night as a ecru coloration of Luminova has been employed. Now in the United States, a dial base is first created and then vitreous paint or glass-based paint is applied in several different layers fired up to 20 times at 800 degrees centigrade. And it is that multiple firing that earns it the name Grand Faux or Big Flame or Big Fire. And so this is a very high rejection rate art as a lot of things can go wrong at every phase from the application to the cooking. There are many opportunities for it to discolor, to burn, to explode or crack, and that happens a lot, which is why fired enamel dials tend to be rare and they tend to defy mass production. You can see it's actually made in two pieces. There's the upper disc and then the lower disc. This is a time-honored tradition for crafting bi-level enamel dials. We have cathedral hands at the center, which are beautiful to see and contrast nicely in blue, and then a track outboard for reading the minutes individually. Of course, you can see that this is the Corps of Engineers dial with a vaulted Corps of Engineers, and then RGM, Lancaster, Pennsylvania. So this watch is the 801 movement. Caliber 801 first debuted back in 2008, and it was the first American-created mechanical watch movement in decades. Here you can see it nicely fills the case back of this 42 millimeter case, which has been handsomely engraved around its periphery. The movement is large and a manual wind caliper with a 44-hour power reserve and a very traditional pocket watch layout. You have your crown wheel, ratchet wheel, you have your center wheel, third wheel, fourth wheel, escape wheel, and then a large balance beating away at a traditional 18,000 vibrations per hour. It is hand-decorated and in handsome fashion. You can see there's a combination of black polishing and solarization on the crown and ratchet wheels. We have circular coat 
region ever. I guess we'll just call them stripes because we're not in Switzerland. And those were across the bridges. On the base plate, we have engine turning. We also have beautiful blued screws. And they've also blued the slot, which I like to see. The beveling is surprisingly broad and mirrored. And while it's probably started by mechanical means, the rounded mirrored finish suggests it is finished by mechanical, or I should say manual means. So mechanical start manual finish. That's exactly what you want to see. We have a black polished uh, regulator. The curb pins have a black polished cap. A very good looking movement altogether. And then this watch, surprisingly for a dress watch, is water resistant down to 50 meters. It does not feature hacking seconds. That is an option you can get on these, though this does not have it. This is a timepiece that is best described as an all-arounder. A uh, timepiece that you could wear pretty much for any occasion. Sporty, formal, it even has a vintage vibe to it. This watch checks all the boxes. Reach out to Team Also at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details.